Hi there, everyone. This is Isabel from Autism Untouched. I don't know if you can all see me clearly, but yeah, I have been so busy the last few days and I'm going to be really busy, but I really felt I want to talk to you guys about the way we use our words in front of our autistic kids. And um, I, I think we, especially us, like, like in my in my case Matthew that is non-verbal earlier years uh, he's, he's starting to use words now as you can see on the videos he's starting to talk but when he was completely non-verbal I often used to make the mistake and think that when I talk to him or, or when I talk to other people in his presence that he doesn't understand what I'm saying and I realized just about a year or so after he started saying his words, I realized how much he actually understands. And I want to really, really want us as aut autism parents, I want us to think not only how we speak to our autistic kids, but how we speak about them when they are around. Because those are the words that they are going to remember and that they are going to take to heart. We, I, I don't think we have any vague idea of how intelligent and how sensitive and smart our autistic kids are. And that being said, we have to even choose what we allow other people to say about our kids in front of them because they are aware of what we are saying and I wanted to give you a few examples for instance um, like I said I was very ignorant in the earlier years because I didn't realize the impact that people's words can have not only on my child but on me do you know when we start feeling sorry for ourselves, it's very easy to fall in that trap. Then we start seeing the struggles with our kids and not the positive parts. And that is what we have to guard against with everything in us. Because once you start taking, taking notice, I found that at school with my son, when teachers gave a lot of negative feedback, it's like a snowball effect. If you give in to that and you agree with those words in front of your child, it's, it's as if there's something in motion, something comes in motion and it keeps going and that behavior keeps on reoccurring. And the more you speak positive about your child, they actually understand what you're saying. Like, for example, when Matthew gets up in the morning, sometimes he's grumpy and tired. Sometimes he had... Well, most of the times he had good sleep. Sometimes he doesn't have good sleep. Then I get up and I tell him, Matthew, good morning. And I tell him, you know, I tell him, wow, you are so lucky. You are a big schoolboy now. You're going to school. You're going to see your friends. You're going to get to learn new stuff. I tell him those things about how good his day is going to be. How amazing it's going to be how he's going to learn more things and he's and I, I I tell him you know Matthew you're going to learn to to talk more you're going to learn to use your words more today I I could I could I could tell you it makes a difference I can tell you that I can guarantee you that some people will say to me oh isn't that a bit being in denial isn't that being uh, that isn't isn't that like positive thinking you know it doesn't change anything if you sp think positive but in actual fact it does change everything matthew i find when i talk positive about him in front of him to my husband when my husband comes home and he tells me how was your day how was matthew's day and then i tell him you know what matthew is the star pupil of the day he got through all his work. He was, was obedient to his teachers. He was polite. 
and he ate his lunch, he had a really amazing day. I make sure that the feedback coming out of my mouth in front of Matthew is good feedback because you will be surprised how that gives your autistic child confidence to do better, to have a good day. Sometimes you, you, you have no idea. I've seen it with my older kids. And they are all, I mean, they're verbal, ex uh, ex except for my oldest son. Like I said, we've always thought that um, he was on the spectrum because of his behavior. But nevertheless, if, if my daughter, Catherine, comes to me and she tells me, Mum, something negative happened at school, I always turn it around in a positive. I do not tell her, oh, you know, this is the, the end of the world. This is such a horrible thing. No, I try and make her see the good in every situation. It is so important, you guys, because we are living in a society where people are rotating, almost rotating. They are moving to the negative more than to the positive. People that are positive and that are, are happy, People think they are on something or there's something wrong with them or it's not normal. It has become normal to complain. It has become normal to, to be offended with everything. Now, let me tell you something. This is another thing. When, when a teacher or somebody tells you something negative about your child, it's going to gain nobody anything if you get offended. Because when you get offended, that person is just going to be able to tick another mark, a cross, well, another cross against your name. Because now you're being in denial. Now you're being rude. Now you're not thinking of your child's best interest. But if you speak positive about your child to everybody, and you speak positive of your child in front of him, the outcome is going to be so much better not only for you but for your child as well because I find when I'm in the company of people who are constantly complaining and being negative it completely drains me and I feel almost hopeless by the end of, of, of spending time with somebody like that and I find that as a parent of an autistic child you can't afford that because you already have more challenges than a parent of a neurotypical child. So try and keep your words positive. When somebody approaches you with a negative outlook on autism or on your specific traits that your child has, don't take it to heart. Take those words and just let it go. That's what I do. I just let it go. I put it in a virtual balloon and I let it go. Because even if there is challenges that my child has, we are going to face it and we will deal with it. But to swallow those words and to hold on to it and feel offended or feel despair and hope and, and without hope, Hopelessness, that's going to make you physically sick and it's going to make you feel depressed. I, I'm sharing this with you because I care about you. I know the depression I went through at a stage because everybody was sympathizing with me, telling me I take my hat off to you. To be able to raise I wouldn't be able to raise a child like that oh God probably knows who to give a child like that to because I won't be able to handle it or they say things like even even people that don't agree with the way you are approaching your child with autism about how you are approaching their education or their upbringing or to teach them skills even people that are not agreeing with you and are putting you down, those people you need to let go. 
I'm telling you, it is vital for your survival mentally and emotionally and physically to not let negative people get to you. Not about your life and not about your child's life. It is so important because I'm saying this from a sincere heart. I've been there. I've went through seasons that I listened to all the negative feedback. And it absolutely drained me. It made me lose all hope. And it took me so long to find that hope again. And to get up in the morning and have hope. But once you get into the habit of having hope, being positive, expecting good results for your child, expecting progress, it will come, I promise you. It is when you give up and you walk with blinkers on if you see your child's not being treated right. Sometimes you have to stand up and be tough. And be in someone's face. You're not going to be able to be Mrs. Popular to everybody, with everybody. You're not going to be able to be everybody's friend. Yes, in, in a perfect world, we, will ex we want everybody to see our kids as we see them. We want everybody to speak positive about, it, about them. But it's not going to happen in this world that we live in. And... We need to accept that our children are unique. Autism is not the normal for other people. It's normal to us because we live with those kids. We love them. We want the best for them. Other people in the outside world, they see it as a disability. Sad thing is, they don't get treated like normal people with normal disabilities. We've talked about this. They basically are expected to act normal because they look normal. And we must be there to support them with our words that we support them and we believe in them. Thank you for listening. This was Isabel from Autism Untouched.